Hey, it's me, GV, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Play The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition. This is part 193. We have seven more episodes until part 200, where we'll have a little special. Like I said, I've already got some ideas in mind, and I think I'm going to go with the two that I've got to make it a little special. And, uh, yeah, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, we are in Kagramez. Let's take a look at what we're doing here. Well, we can't, because I forgot. Kagramez doesn't actually have a quest. It's just sort of something really, really interesting. And I think I do remember what our reward is. Uh, what lies at the end of Kagramez. And I think you'll all quite like it. Especially because I used to use it a lot in my older videos from way back when I covered all of the Dragonborn stuff, all of the Solstheim stuff, uh, when it was recent. Um, we're not going to be really using it on Adronach too much, but we may. I don't know where I'm going to take Adronach. I want to get him to 100 one-handed, and then we'll probably move on to something else. Because I want to always be working towards something, especially if we're going to kill the Ebony Warrior. Which we will. Which we will. It's just going to take a lot of grinding. Probably a lot of off-camera grinding. But we shall see. Anyways, we got this guy following us. The Steadfast Dwarven Sphere. And we're going to go ahead and continue uh, in Kagramez. So this one needs top left, middle, bottom right, and then bottom left. So hopefully I can remember that. My short-term memory, I'm not sure if that's the right phrase. I've mentioned this before. I'm not sure if it's considered short-term memory, um, but it's it's horrible. Whatever that memory where, you know, it, you have to remember something, like a phone number. I am the worst with remembering phone numbers, anything really. And, and it's almost like my own anxiety gets in the way. It's like I start immediately thinking, I'm gonna forget, I'm gonna forget, I'm gonna forget, and then I forget, you know? I'm sure a lot of you have that same thing. I just, I see people that are able to sort of, you know, not have that happen to them. So they're able to remember things like phone numbers and I just, I don't get it. It does not work for me. All right, so we have an, yet another trial here in Kagramez. We're gonna go ahead and get our Mirax sword out. Oh, this one's cool. Okay, I haven't really touched on... Let me turn down my volume a little bit. It's incredibly loud. I haven't really touched on um, how the arena changes each time, which is a really nice touch, you know? It's like it's like one of my favorite uh, Super Smash Bros. levels was the Pokemon Stadium. Always the different Pokemon Stadiums, because they would always change, and I always liked that a lot. And it's kind of like that, you know? Each thing is, uh, is changing it up a little bit. Okay, we're going to take on this Dwarven Ballista Master by ourselves here while hopefully Thorn and Spike clear out the rest of the Automatons. For some reason, these guys always give us the execution animation. I like it, though. Makes for easy thumbnails. Okay, our Dwarven Sphere is still alive. Something is shocking us. Hopefully it's not you. Yeah, he is our friend. Who is attacking us? Yeah! All right, buddy, he's over here. Can you help me out? Yeah, th these guys take quite a beating. I can use some of your some of your help, Dwarven Sphere. Let's see how much damage he does, if he's going to do anything other than just follow me around. Maybe he doesn't attack other automata? I don't think that's the case, though. I think maybe he's either just glitching out. Can you, hey, buddy, can you, like, attack him? Or maybe he's just shooting with his little crossbow arm. Not really sure why he's not attacking this guy, but we're going to go ahead and finish him off. We gotta do everything ourselves. I was gonna say, he's also being shocked. That is a bolt right through our head. It's gone now, but there was literally a bolt right through our head. I mean, yeah, we're the, we're the almighty powerful Adronach, but still, I think, uh, I don't know about surviving a giant mega bolt through our cranium and very large brain. I don't think that would work so well, but. Then again, we just healed ourselves with restoration magic. Again, I have to point out, that's my least favorite thing ever when people say, are you really judging validity of a game about dragons and magic? Yes, I am. Because, because the parameters are already set, okay? Where if someone gets shot in the head with an arrow, they're going to die, okay? The parameters of dragons being alive and, and magic being able to flow from your fingertips are there. It's not like I can just start flying around. There's no levitation potions in this game. Ugh, I hate when people do that. It's it's the most annoying thing. Just like with um, y you know, like what y you're at the end of the you're like at December 31st, and someone says, "See you next year," <laughs> or it's already midnight, and someone says, "Don't you mean tomorrow?" N you know what I mean, asshole. 
Ugh, I hate that stuff. All right, anyways. We have a Dwarven Centurion Master with some Daedric Arrows. Always nice to see. My favorite miscellaneous item, the Centurion Dynamo Core. Some Dwarven Oil. And not much else. And on the table here, we have Stallroom Arrows. Three diamonds, but we're only interested in the flawless one. A whole bunch of gold ingots, which I'm not even going to take. Let's see, what do we have in here? Another flawless diamond, my god. See, there's no point. There's no point to take anything ever again. Because we're going to have so many flawless diamonds. They're going to be, we're going to be rolling in flawless diamonds. We just need to sell all of those. Uh, we'll take that. And I think... That's it, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to go ahead and leave Kagramez. That was it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Just kidding. Just kidding. Get your hands off that keyboard. Don't worry. I know what exists here. We have the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate. I had forgotten about this little guy for so long since it's been a very long time since I've played an archer character. Uh, this bow was something that I used for the longest time just because it seemed cool. We're going to take a closer look at it. I believe it is unique. It looks... Kind of like a Daedric Bow a little bit, I suppose. 50% um, chance for each attribute to absorb 25 points of health, stamina, and or magicka. So, the way that I interpret that, and I'm pretty sure this is how it went, is that, yeah, every shot that you fire has a 50% chance to absorb 25 health, stamina, and magic. Oh, I see. I see, so there's a 50% chance to absorb each one. So if you're really lucky, you can absorb all three, uh, 25 points each of health, stamina, and magicka on the same arrow. But it all depends on how lucky you are, which I suppose is why it's called the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate. Never really put two and two together. But there we go, yeah, so 25 points extra of health, that just rips the health out of them. And it absorbs too, so it gives it to you. Um, I believe the charge ran out super fast, but the damage was good on this weapon. I just really enjoyed it. It was a really cool, awesome weapon. And here we have two little seats here, which lets you know that uh, the Dwemer used to watch these trials happen. Which makes sense, considering how disgusting and, uh, and uh, vicious they were. And just horrible, horrible people. Uh, we're going to do something. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to find a way around this. I'm going to go ahead and do this just to show you guys. Because I've always wondered. You know, we see these big openings uh, in the air. And there's not really a way to get to them. So that's the entrance. That leads further into Kagrin, Kagramez. And then we've got an entrance up there. We've got an entrance up there. And I believe that's where we just came from, right? So, since we just saved the game. I'm going to go ahead and open up the console and type in TCL which is going to toggle collision, allowing us to levita uh, levitate. Ironically enough, I just said we can't levitate if we want to, and I was thinking, well, we could if we use the console, but you know what I mean. So there's nothing over here, and I'm not going to start going out of the map, um, but if we sprint over this way, that was where we just dropped down from. Where was the other little? Over here, yeah. Uh, it's one of the few instances in Skyrim where there seems to be other hallways that don't actually lead anywhere. They don't usually do that. If they show a hallway, you usually can get to it. So I just wanted to show you guys that um, there is nothing over there. I'm going to toggle collision back on. We're going to fall back down. And I'm actually going to reload the save because now it's like we never actually use the console. You know what I mean? And I don't like using the console unless absolutely necessary. But I, at the same time, I still want to show you guys certain things. So that's it. We get a, uh, a Dwarven Sphere follower. Unfortunately, I'm going to tell him to leave. It's time for us to part ways. Don't you hiss at me. Your pet had, uh, heads back home. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't want to use any companions. It makes the game a little bit more difficult, and everyone's always like, Why don't you play on Legendary difficulty? You're not a real YouTuber if you don't play on Legendary difficulty. Yeah, because the whole game's just about difficulty, right? Blech! Um, yeah, but it, it does make our gameplay a little bit more difficult because we're by ourselves. And I just don't, you guys know me, I don't like companions. So we're going to send that sphere back on home. But yeah, out of this place, we get uh, two pets, the spider or the sphere. Can't have both at the same time. And the dwarven black bow of fate, which is a really, really, really cool bow. Uh, very good from what I remember. It's been, like I said, it's been a long, long time since I've actually used bows. Um, but we'll, we'll keep it and we'll see if we use it. We've got some sort of little shack over here, and I would like to see what that is going to be, because I think I might know what it is. But we shall see in a second once we reach it. 
Yes. Ramshackle trading post. Okay, there's something about this this place. There is something about it, and I think I know what it is. We have a note here. Meet me here at midnight. Quite interesting. And an ebony arrow, as well as an East Empire Company strong box. We're going to go ahead and pop that sucker open a little bit more to the right. There we are. I said there we... No, I said there we are. <sighs> Sir. Okay. Come on now. You're just a stupid expert lock. How many of you have I opened? Okay, there we go. That one gave me a little bit more trouble than usual. Uh, gold, Potion of Ultimate Healing, and East Empire Pendant, which we've got a few. I would say we have at least eight. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to wait till midnight. It's eight right now. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's four hours. I don't know why I need to count on... I don't know why I needed to count on my fingers for that. That's incredibly stupid. You just... It's plus four, clearly. Uh, it should be midnight. Yeah, 12 a.m. It is midnight. And there is no sign of anybody... But I do know someone does come here. I do remember meeting with somebody. So. Hmm. Maybe we have to be further away from this. Let's go to Ash Fallow Citadel and see how much time moves forward once we reappear. Okay, right now it's 1 a.m. So time passed about an hour forward. Uh, let's wait 24 hours, which would be 1. Then midnight, and then 11. We'll wait 22 hours. It'll be 11 o'clock p.m. by the time this is over. We'll fast travel back to the Ramshackle trading post. Thus, it will be after midnight. Or maybe we should just walk over. Maybe that's what the thing is. Maybe you have to walk over. I don't remember exactly how to make this guy appear, and I don't know if he only appears on certain days. But we shall find out. So it should be 11 right about now. Okay, and I think we'll just head on over. We should have it on our map. Yeah, it's right over there. In fact, we're going to wait one more hour to give him time to spawn. And now we're going to go ahead and head on over. Hopefully this works, because it is cool. It's a neat little interaction with this. No, don't. Who are you? Who are you? Ah, uh, Reavers. Okay, we're going to try to outrun the Reavers. But if they chase me... All right, let's just go ahead and kill them. I have somewhere to be, people. I don't want to kill you. You're going to die. Ah. Uh. Okay, if you're gonna be, if you're gonna just block the whole time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear your soul out. So, yeah. All right, and that means we also need to charge this again. Should have done this before we soul teared them, soul tore them, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Now we're gonna run. That guy should reanimate and then go attack the other dude. We're gonna put this away and head to the ramshackle trading post and just hope that someone is there. Well, this is unfortunate. It is midnight, right? They said, meet me at midnight. It is 12 a.m. Huh. Okay, well, uh, we'll try and come back here at some point. Um, obviously, it's not really working out right now. Okay, we're going to go back to Unearthed. Wait for a message from Rallis. Um, Kagramez took some time, so if we travel back to Raven Rock, hopefully we get another courier that will allow us to finish off this quest. Because this has been a lengthy, 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 lengthy quest. And no courier, unfortunately. Let's just walk ahead a little bit. Okay, well, if that's the case, I am going to travel and wait about two days and then travel back and that should work. So I will see you guys when that happens. Alright guys, so while I was waiting, I did a little research, and apparently, the person that we're trying to meet appears between midnight and 6 a.m. So, if we wait 24 hours, that's 5 a.m., uh, 4, 3, 2, 1, midnight. So, we're gonna do one more little waiting bout. This will almost assuredly mean that uh, Courier will appear once we head back to Raven Rock. We're gonna wait this little bit of extra time, and then we're gonna head back. Uh, the, the area has to be entered between midnight and 6 a.m. If you wait at the area, it does not work. So this should be 11.56. We're going to wait one more hour to ensure that this works. And we're going to head back now to the Ramshackle Trading Post. Hopefully it doesn't take 
more than six hours to get here. I don't think so. And hopefully he's here because this is a really cool interaction I want to show you guys. But this will be the last time we try. Alright, he's there. Wonderful. Yes. Who are you? Oh, my. Who are you? Or something. Keep moving. Where do you get your goods? Sometimes things fall off the back of a car. I find them, clean them up, and resell them. What have you got for sale? Take a look. Okay, so this is Follis Sylvain. And... Oh, no. Okay, let's take a look at everything that he has. He has some random arrows, but this is not the bow that we wanted. Uh, potions... Standard stuff. Ingredients. Standard stuff. But is there anything we haven't eaten? No. Books. Fear poison recipe and miscellaneous. Greater soul gem. Lesser soul gem. Lockpick. I thought... Until next time. This guy should have something to do with a unique bow. And I thought he just sells it or you have to have... But I do remember there was something odd about this particular interaction. Okay, well, I'll figure that out at some point, and if we can do it, I'll head back. Uh, but yeah, that's a unique seller there, and he's got a unique bow that I have gotten. I know that I have gotten it, but I think I remember you may have had to have the uh, pickpocket perk that lets you pickpocket certain weapons from people. But we didn't even see the bow there, so that's quite interesting. Regardless, here's the courier. I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Let's see here. I've got another letter from Rallis. This is the last thing I'm delivering for him. That place is just too much for me. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Don't worry, buddy. Something tells me this is the last letter he'll ever write. Okay. So, we have a final letter from Rallis Sedaris. Number four, in fact. You're needed. You'll notice that each letter gets more and more concise. He's not really, uh... He's not really talking as much as, as he was previously. Alright, let's go ahead and activate this quest. Well, that's not a good sign. Everybody is dead here. All of the miners are dead. There's blood all over the place. And you know, in Skyrim, if there's grape jelly under them, that means they were already dead. And not dead because... And they, they just, they weren't just killed. They have been dead for a while. All right, on the table we have the Journal of Rallis Sedaris, Volume 23. Lord Ozadal demands more blood, and I give it willingly. The hired men have somewhat pitiful souls, so it sometimes takes, sev takes several of them to achieve the desired effects. I won't be writing anymore. There is no need. The time has come to awaken the master and bring him to the fate he deserves. So it looks like Rallis has finally gone off of the def- It looks like Rallis Sedaris has finally gone off the deep end. And he's talking about blood sacrifice and things like that. Uh, something tells me that we're not gonna- He's not gonna honor the partnership that we set out before. Alright, so let's make sure we have what we need. And we need our boys, because we are no doubt going to... Was that a delayed sound effect of me drawing my sword? Was this miner here before? Answers... I do not know. Okay, there are Draugr forming all around me. I'm gonna go ahead and make a shortcut here. We already did have a shortcut, and I probably should have just taken that, but... I don't think this location is, is that big. Alright, we're activating all of the traps. I think I went the complete wrong way. Yeah, this was the shortcut over here. Hello there! Just a Draugr, huh? Yeah, not really gonna work, buddy. Not really gonna work. You are in an instance that is far too high level for you, my friend. Alright, let's go ahead and get the boys out. It would be nice to finish this quest before this episode ends. I don't want to spend that entire time fighting Draugr. Excuse me, fellas. Gonna go ahead and close these doors behind you. I think you guys are smart enough to know how to open them, and that's cool and all. Okay, we have not been in this room just yet. All of these Draugr are gonna start to awaken, including this Death Lord who's gonna take a million points of damage. 
let's get some friends out here. We can rotate these pillars. So while they're dealing with them, looks like we just got two eagles. Could it be that easy? This is Skyrim. Does this work? Wow, how lame is that? That is so lame. Right, what does this pull chain do? Rotates that, and what's through here? Oh, that looks like some armor to me. Okay, let's go ahead and refresh Thorn and Spike. This thing just rotating constantly? Okay, let's go ahead and pull this one too. Maybe we have to have them both rotating at the same time. This is a cluster F-bomb if I ever heard one. You know what? That feels really lame. It's a cluster fuck, okay? Oh, look at that. It reveals other things. I see. Okay. So we have to pull the, uh... Yeah, we have to make these... Go to the eagles, I suppose, right? Yeah. We have to turn these until they're eagles. And then we will get the Azadal armor. Most assuredly. Any, any day now, though. Or maybe not. Yeah, they just show us. Okay, they just show us that we want to have these on the fish. Or the whale. Whatever you want to call it. Boom. Alright, sweet. And we have Azadal's armor of retribution. Which I believe is heavy armor. Yes, it is. Enemies who strike you with a melee attack have a small chance of being paralyzed. Now that sounds like an incredibly useful effect. Unfortunately, as with most stuff we find, uh, we do not use heavy armor, nor do we use light armor. But that's an incredibly good effect. Maybe we'll switch it up, though. We could learn some heavy armor. I don't know. We'll have to. We'll have to take a look at how much magicka uh, we use up if we switch over stuff. Okay, we have a whole bunch of very big potions here. Ultimate well-being. Ooh, I think that. Heals everything. Alright, let's kill everything in this hallway. Hello, goodbye, who are you? Draugr of White. You're not gonna last that long, but don't block, man. You're just wasting valuable time. Oh, that guy's on fire. Luckily, he didn't mess everything up. Okay, they're gonna take care of him, and then we have another thing here. Is it just whale whale again? Is Azadal somehow connected with a whale? I don't think this is gonna work, but. Nope, that did not work. In fact, that set the entire place on fire. Ooh, there's some stall room here. I wonder if we have to mine that to get the hint. Let's see. Where is our puzzle piece? Where is the thing showing us what we need to do? Uh, maybe we'll just try both combinations, or all three combinations of things, like double snake. How about double snake? Does that work? Wow! I'm not sure why that worked, but it did. We have Azadal's Ow. Azadal's Helm of Vision. Your conjuration and rune spells cost 25% more, but can be cast at a greater range. That's honestly not great whatsoever. Another heavy armor piece. So, if we did wear Azadal's full set, it would be kind of applicable. Um, considering he is a mage. And we would gain heavy armor, so that would make us level up faster. Huh. I'll, I'll consider it once we have the full set. I'll consider it. Maybe we'll wear it at least for a little bit and see how difficult it is. What are you doing, Rallis? Yeah, that sounds about right, buddy. Okay, defeat Azadal. There he is. We're going to fully buff up for this one. Highborn. Dragon aspect. <gasps> Let's see, what else do we want? Ebony Flesh. Uh, Battle Fury. Why do we have that favorited? I guess we'll activate it. Just in case it affects Thorn and Spike. Like I said, I still don't think that it does. And we'll grab Mirax Sword and Incinerate. It'd be pretty applicable if we killed Azadal with fire. You can't stand against my DPS, dude. You just can't. It looks like you can't do anything. It looks like you're kind of kind of frozen in time there, buddy. The all-powerful Azadol. Yeah, not really. Okay, Thorn and Spike. You clear up everybody. I'm going to go ahead and loot this stuff. We got Bone Meal, Gold, and Azadol. Increases fire resistance by 50% and fire spell damage by 25%. Someone mentioned, and I didn't realize this, the three Dragon Priest masks that you find in... Um, 
Solstheim all have the same thing. So this one's fire resistance 50% and spell damage 25%. So that exists for the shock and for frost as well. Okay, very nice. And finally, hopefully, confront Rallis. Oh, I thought you were dead. Oh, God. What happened? What have I done? What's going on here? I... Uh, I don't remember. Ever since I got here to... to... Uh, Colbill, I've heard whispers. Voices. Thoughts. Imaginings. They've only gotten louder since I've stayed. Pounding. Driving. A couple of times I blacked out. It was... It was just before the Draugr woke up. Did you... kill the miners? I don't know. I... maybe. It's what... It's what he wanted. He just needed their energy. I don't know. I hope I did. But maybe I... Please, you have to believe me. I can't let you go unpunished. Especially with that unique item you have. What? No, you can't. I have his will on my side. He will command all of us. He's dead, Rallis. And I'm going to kill you with his apparel on. Okay, so Azadal, heavy armor. 50% fire resistance, fire spell damage, 25%. That might actually be worth it. Oh, but we have to keep in mind that the ethereal crown gets removed as well, which is quite unfortunate. Azadal's armor of retribution. Enemies who strike you with a melee attack have a small chance of being paralyzed. Azadal's boots of water walking. I think we missed the glove. The, the gauntlets. Yeah, we might have missed some gauntlets. Um, Azadal's Helm of Vision, so we can water walk. Oh, oh, that's right, we can switch from the... Okay, so this is obviously far better for us than the Helm of Vision. This thing is a piece of crap. Uh, so we're going to equip the helmet, or the, uh, the mask. We have the Ring of Arcana, which sucks. We have the Ring of Necromancy, which sucks. And I think that is it. Okay, so this is what we look like now. Pretty badass, actually. Because we have, uh, what's it called? I forget what Warfrost does. He's freezing us. Wow, look at that. I think he's actually... Okay, we have these dudes here. Let's not get killed by Rallis. That would be crazy lame. Wow, he got launched. Okay, where? what do I have in my left hand? Oh, incinerate. Yeah, let's try out the fire damage. heal yourself entirely no 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 hey 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 no no none of that oh my god don't make me do it dude oh i hate you rallis sedaris he just paralyzed himself from the azadol armor and goodbye sir thanks for playing 83 gold, potion of extreme healing, lame, stamina, lame, leather stuff, lame, but hoarfrost. Targets take 15 points of frost damage to health and stamina and have a small chance of being frozen solid. Extremely cool. Uh, we are carrying too much to be able to run. Let's see. Goodbye, Iron War Axe. Do we have anything else? Goodbye, Orcish Bow of Flames. And... Looks like we're good to go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we end this episode, I want to see if I missed any of the Azadol set. It seems like we should have... Oh, and also, wait a second. We never got to the, uh, the word wall. Yeah, there was a word wall. Ooh, look at that. Okay, hold on, hold on here. Uh, all of these miners should not have anything interesting on them. We're going to put this away. We're going to travel through here. Maybe this is where the gauntlets... I don't think they would save the gauntlets for last, though. That doesn't make much sense. We have a big chest not much does this lead to a word wall oh and the black book right forgot about the black book okay chitin shield potion of ultimate healing ebony war axe let's see all right before we take that black book let's activate the lever that's going to open up a little there's a stallroom tomb there. I do hear the word wall. 
Okay, let's see where this leads. We'll go back and get the black book in a second. Yeah, there we go. I think I know which one this is. Cyclone, yeah, it should be the last one, I think. I think that's all of the sh uh, the Cyclone words, is it? Yes, it is, Strike, okay, wonderful. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and favorite that one, unfavorite Battle Fury, we'll have to use Cyclone. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that strong, but we shall see. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this looks like it goes back to the start. So, I'm gonna go ahead and see if we missed anything whatsoever. I feel like we definitely missed the gauntlets. I will be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we did indeed miss the gauntlets. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but I pulled a chain on the wall, and I didn't really know what it did, like, in a couple of, uh, a couple of episodes ago. Anyways, the, the path was already open. I just sort of had to find my way there. There we have Azadal's gauntlets of warding, which are definitely going to set off a trap. And, yeah, it was this one right here, that chain. And then we can see further down below, if you guys remember that. Okay, so let's head back to the black book. And before we jump inside, uh, we will equip this. Okay, here we are. Wonderful. All right, so let's take a look at our apparel. Uh, yeah, we also get a bonus effect as well, as we will see. So we have Azadol, Azadol's Armor of Retribution, Azadol's Boots of Water Walking, and Azadol's Gauntlets of Warding. Your wards are 25% less effective, but absorb 50% of the magicka from incoming spells. Uh, completely useless for us since we don't use wards. Um, but, now with all four of those equipped, and you can see we have three here that we can equip as well, but we're not going to because they're crap. Uh, we should have an active effect now. Let's see. As it all's genius, yes, increases your enchanting skill by 10 points, which is wonderful because our enchanting is already high, and now it's at 86. Yes, indeed. Which means, does that mean that we can... No, we actually have to inherently have the, the points. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and that is it for Unearthed. You can see our quest journal is clean. We've got nothing except for miscellaneous and this one that we can't beat. So that's going to be it for this episode. In the next episode, we will jump into the final black book. Look at that. It's right there. We'll have all seven, and I will see you guys there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.